Hello, happy Christmas and welcome to Filling the Sink, a podcast from Catalan News. I'm Lorcan Doherty and this week we're talking about charity at Christmas. Christmas is a time of celebration, of family and friends, giving and receiving gifts. But for many people, of course, the holiday season, for one reason or another, is a struggle. It can be a very lonely time of year and a very expensive time of year, especially for parents of young children. On this week's podcast, we thought, therefore, it would be a nice idea to look at some of the ways people in Catalonia are giving back this Christmas including a Red Cross campaign that aims to make sure that no child goes without presents and an organisation that cooks up Christmas dinner for the homeless. And we'll also let you know what you can do to help if you're able. Joining me today are Jared Scotch Folk and Killian Shades. Happy Christmas to you both. Merry Christmas to you, Lorcan. No, I can't go it. Lorcan. Gary and my August. Bon Nadal, I should say. Gerard. Bon Nadal, exactly. Uh, I like. I was thinking of. I don't <laughs> understand the language. Uh, we've already done a podcast back in our first year, uh, Christmas in Catalonia. That's episode eight. Do check that out because that's when we talked about all the traditions in Catalonia, the food. I hope uh, you talk about Tio and we, Cagane. We talked about all the ways that Catalonia celebrates Christmas through Like poo. all those catalogical ways. Yes, uh, I, I, you know, the, the obsession that you have. A very funny obsession, it has to be said. But Extremely uh, enjoyable. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, do check that out if you don't know what we're talking about. Uh, but today our focus is on charity, on giving at Christmas. Or as they say here, la solidaridad. Solidarity. Exactly. Yes. Yeah, I can see your Catan lessons are improving. <laughs> Thanks very much. So talk to me, Gerard. What would you say the main well-known kind of fundraising events are here? Well, there are several. They are not related to Christmas, but normally they tend to happen at the end of the year. So La Marató, for example, it's what you would call like a telethon. Yeah. So, yeah, like for hours, this TV3, the Catan public broadcaster, organizes a telethon with the goal of raising money on a specific disease, on research on a specific disease. For example, they made one for COVID when yep, in, back course. in 2020. And this year, for example, it was cardiovascular diseases. Okay. And every year they ra- raise millions. Of yeah. In fact, this year they raised over 8 million euros in one day. And how does it work? People just phone up to donate or? Yeah, well, exactly. There is a hotline number set just for La Marató, for the telethon that's available throughout all Catalonia and in the world, as well as like going to an ATM or even like there are activities across Catalonia that like help raise money for La Marator for this telethon. And one of the other ways of raising money La Marator has is a compact disc, a CD that has like several international artists and even like local artists singing like for free just as a charity donation for them. Surprisingly, it's sold out in 2022, a CD. Uh, in 2020, <laughs> yeah, still, still people still buying CDs if they're for charity, I suppose. And that happens uh, just before Christmas every year. And as you said earlier, Gerard raises money for a, a different uh, disease or research into a different disease every year. Um, Killian, kind of other big, uh, well-known charity drive here is the Gran Recapta, isn't it? It is indeed, yeah. So this is like an annual food drive that they have, usually towards the end of the year as well. So again, not exactly Christmas related, but it's partly to do with that season of giving, no? Uh, And this is a food drive, like I said, uh, over the course of a full weekend. So typically what you'll find in supermarkets up and down the territory, there'll be people, volunteers there inside the supermarkets who will be there to collect food that you want to donate to the food bank. Normally it's non-perishable goods that they're looking for. So stuff like cereals, oils, milk, canned foods that won't go off um, anytime soon. And it's essentially just to fill up the stocks of the food bank in order to provide meals for vulnerable families for the next couple of months. And even though it's a very, very successful Successful and really widely regarded initiative across Catalonia, the Gran Recapta. Organisers still say that even though they collect tons of food every year, last year, for example, they only collected around half of what they said was actually needed. So they're always looking to try and do a little bit better. But one of the ways that I think that they're doing that is they've always got a very famous ad that's out every year. And I have to say the one from 2019 is is. They have a song to it that it goes hard, to be yeah. honest. It's, it's a good song, I have to say. Yeah, okay, let's take, take a little listen. And what, what are they saying? Solidaries, or obviously people who show solidarity, I suppose you would say. Yeah. And voluntaries, volunteers. 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 
oil, conserved food, and milk. Is it right? It's the shopping list, is it? <laughs> So that's the Gran Recapta annual food drive from the food bank. Christmas, of course, for the little ones is all about the presents, uh, but not everyone can afford to spend money on gifts. This week, we took a look at one charity initiative that aims to make sure that no child goes without presents this year. The UN Declaration on the Rights of the Child recognises that children have the right to leisure time and play. Games help children discover, observe and interpret the world around them and teaches them how to relate different parts of the world and how to socialise with others. Children grow and flourish through playing games. Charities across the world and country take up the responsibility to ensure that this right is adhered to and that every child will get the chance to play with a new toy on Christmas. One of those is the Red Cross, known locally as Creu Roja. They organise toy drives every year to make sure that every child, no matter their circumstances, gets to enjoy a present every year. The campaign is known as The Educational Toy. And to make sure that happiness is spread to every corner of the land this festive season, the charity asks for donations in the form of both presents to give to children, but also financial. You can donate online or via a bank transfer, or else you can bring a toy to one of their many collection points up and down the country. If you want to provide a toy directly though, it must meet a certain set of criteria in order to be accepted. First of all, it has to be a new toy. The charity don't want to discriminate against any child, and giving one child a new toy while somebody else gets a used one would be unfair. Furthermore, the Red Cross cannot guarantee that any used toy is completely safe after it's been opened from its original packaging. Secondly, toys cannot be sexist, meaning they shouldn't affirm any gender roles. Historically, toys have been classified as being either for boys or for girls, associating each gender with specific values and roles that contribute to maintaining social inequalities between men and women. The organisation wants to break gender stereotypes and give children toys that promote cooperation and sensitivity. Thirdly, the toys should not have any relation to war or violence. The toys should be an educational tool, and the charity will assess whether the toy in any way promotes aggression, violence, destruction, or other principles that can build a harmful attitude towards another person or group. And if by any chance you hear about this initiative after Christmas and you think you're too late, well, you're not. The Red Cross are collecting toys all year round, constantly preparing for the next holiday period. So that is the Red Cross's uh, Jugina Educativa. More information on our website, catalannews.com. Gerard, that's not the only initiative uh, for children this Christmas. Though. No, exactly. In fact, it's not even the only toy drive initiative for Christmas because there is Cadena Ser, a radio station here in Catalonia, that organizes the Cabinet Sense Jugina Telethon. Well, not telethon because it's for radio. A radiothon? A radiothon. Captain Sense Jurgina, which so is like... No, no Child Without Toys, exactly. Uh -huh. And that takes place on January the 6th. Which is, of course, the, a big day for presents here. Yeah, not, exactly. Not like Three Kings home, Day. Yeah. Three Kings Day. And obviously that's Toys Drive initiatives, but there are several others just as uh, hospitals here in Barcelona and across Catalonia that they sell things just like nail as a biscuit in the form of a long tube here, typical here in Catalonia. That's like a Christmassy dessert, isn't exactly. it? Exactly. And this way they can raise money just to fund research, to look for treatments for these kids with cancer and terminal illnesses, for example. And there are other initiatives here as well in Catalonia, just as Fundacios Villavecchias, who raises money uh, just to promote firefighters and Santa Clauses to visit kids at hospitals, because obviously they cannot leave because of their health condition. They bring the spirit of Christmas to the kids that cannot get home. I saw one of them, the, uh, the San Juan de Deo, which is a big children's hospital here in Barcelona, has uh, their online shop and very nice tote bags, actually. So check out their Botiga Solidaria, their, their charity shop, San Juan de Deo. Christmas, of course, as well, can be a very lonely time for vulnerable people, for the elderly, uh, for homeless people. And uh, yeah, there's a lot of initiatives as well to kind of, uh, well, help people get through what can be a, a hard time of year, Killian. Absolutely, yeah. There's this one app that I found in the uh, research for this, 
I absolutely love this idea. It's called <laughs> Adopta un Abuelo, which is literally <laughs> adopt a grandparent. And this is an app that forms communities, basically, bringing random people together who don't know each other, but just connecting them with elderly people who, who sign up. <laughs> I like to think about it as maybe like a Tinder for grandparents, <laughs> but one in which is... Uh, it works to charity pr- there. It, it, it promotes uh, wholesome uh, vibes instead of, yeah, yeah. instead of uh, connecting the grandparents themselves to it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it lets people connect, has video calls. According to their website, they operate across Spain, so 2 million elderly people live alone and 360,000 live in care homes, and they estimate that 60% of those don't receive any visits. So, obviously, that's so many people here who go through the holidays without really having anybody to spend any time with. People can sign up, and they pay a fee, which allows the elderly people to then enjoy the service for free, as well as receiving tech support if they have any issues, and as well as that, they can enjoy in-person events. They do very, very interesting things like show cookings with the elderly people. Mm -hmm. They have a section called Abuelos Influencers. So like (laughs) real influencers of... Instagrammers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) Inspirational talks with masters of life, maestros de vida. Uh, They do care home visits, after work sessions with beers with the elderly. Um, it's just it's just absolutely fantastic. And so far, they have helped three and a half thousand grandparents be adopted. Beautiful, beautiful stuff. And they've got a specific initiative for Christmas. Yeah, the Santa Claus list that they say, like they share it with the grandparents so they can like make their wish list. And this wish list is shared with volunteers who buy the gift that uh, grandparents wanted. And obviously they make like a beautiful ceremony, like giving out gifts, something similar to Reyes Majos, which is an, another initiative uh, where people send Christmas gifts to elderly people. Uh, Jared, am I hearing that correctly? Are you saying Reyes Majos? Yeah, exactly. So like cool, cool, cool kings. kings. Majo yeah, because meaning it's, cool. Because <laughs> normally it's Reyes Magos from Which is Three like Wise Men. So. But it's like magic. Yeah, exactly. Kind of and stuff. But, okay, very good. Very nice good. play on words. Now, the Arels Foundation helps homeless people in Barcelona. They've been doing so for more than 30 years. And they have a few special initiatives at Christmas. Jared has been finding out more. Unwrapping Christmas gift with your family after eating one of the most special meals in the world with its chicken soup and the traditional Christmas bar known as Turro. Families, friends and loved ones come together to enjoy the holidays, but many people sleeping on the street cannot afford this traditional experience. To tackle this, the Arrels Foundation, which has been helping homeless people in Barcelona for the last 35 years, organizes a Christmas lunch and dinner every year. My name is Farhan Busquets, I'm the director of Arrels Foundation. In the Christmas season, we make a dinner the night in 24th and a, a, a lunch in the 25th. It's the two typical days here in Catalonia. The people that we, we attend, the people that we help, is people that have been living in the street for years or people that currently is, is sleeping in the street. It's a very special moment in the year and they, they feel very, very, very lonely. Um, they feel that the family is far away. They feel the, the very uh, different from the other people and they need a space like that to normalize uh, some days, some Christmas uh, celebrations and have the, the chance for uh, celebrate uh, these moments. The Arrels Foundation has helped around 3,000 people this year and they estimate 1,200 homeless people sleep on the streets each night in Barcelona. For them, organizing these Christmas meals is a way of bringing people together. We, we offer the possibility to come uh, to near 120 people. We, we, we give 120 invitations, but, but some people uh, finally don't come or finally don't want. But f- people that don't, does not come, it's very important for them too because the, the, the possibility to have uh, that option to go is very, very, very important for them. Arrels put on the meal through crowdfunding campaigns for donations and asked volunteers to help cook and serve meals on this special day. This year, they received too many requests to volunteer, leading them to close the call. What is very important is that volunteers that... Uh, current volunteers of the organizations. We don't accept people that usually don't come to, to help us because we need uh, that the people coming here uh, knows the people and have uh, and knows the reality to to, to understand uh, what what kind of relations. While Christmas is people empathizing more with the homeless, around 30 volunteers make them really feel like part 
of a family. Yeah, and it's a very special moment for everybody, for the volunteers and, and the homeless people. It's a very lovely moment of uh, approaching and, and giving someone something that is very difficult to give, no? that something that uh, gives the opportunity to celebrate the Christmas uh, in family. It's, it's a really, really special gift for them. Our thanks to the Arels Foundation there. Obviously putting on a Christmas dinner, Christmas lunch, Christmas Eve here is a, is a big day for food as well. And, uh, you know, I suppose that's one of the things about Christmas that maybe if you are in a vulnerable situation, you're kind of missing out on. And, Jared, that's why maybe that it's not just the RLs Foundation uh, that organizes these kind of things, is it? No, exactly. There is the Comunità San Egidio, so San Egidio's community, which is like a Catholic com uh, religious community, that they also organize this Christmas lunch here in Barcelona and, and other places in Catalonia, but also over the world. So like in last year, they welcomed over a quarter of a million people just for Christmas lunch. And in Sabadell, Killian, which is just outside Barcelona, they have a, a, a special Christmas dinner as well. Yeah, so they sort of do this community dinner. It's like a 20-year annual tradition that they've been doing in the city. Uh, they call it a dinar de migas solidari. And migas is one of these brilliant, traditional, old-school meals, dishes that they have here in Catalonia. It's something like fried breadcrumbs with meat and veg kind of thrown in and... You know, you, you can imagine it's very, hearty, very easy hearty to cook. Food, yeah. Hearty food, Soul food, you might call it. Um, but yeah, they held this on December 11th this year. And basically the idea was to provide meals and food as well for the most vulnerable families of the city. So for just one euro, people can get a plate of hearty food, a glass of wine and a 2023 calendar. Uh, in total, 350 of these meals were made. Fantastic. There's no end to the charity initiatives. One that you might see if you're in Barcelona around the festive period is the Responsible Consumption Fair because that happens right in the city centre. Yeah, indeed. It's taking place in Plaza Catalunya in the city centre until December 30th. So a great place to buy your Christmas gift, last minute Christmas gifts. Yeah. And, and that... you can see a lot of things. You can buy craft, clothing, textile accessories, even culture and some books if you're interested in that. Fantastic, fantastic. And, uh, you know, we've got, we found a few kind of more unusual uh, charity drives as well. Can we you? have, yeah. A few off-the-wall ideas out there across Catalonia. The one I found was an escape room for charity. Really? Like, <laughs> can you believe it? So up in Malgrat de Mar, just on the coast north of Barcelona, they've already got one company that, that's based there that, that does kind of different themed escape rooms. They've had one on Frida Kahlo before, other different themes... But this year, for the festive period, they put one on that's, that's Christmas-based. It's all about <laughs> design to sort of look like a regular Christmas dinner. Um, this is very, very interesting because if you wanted to take part, they didn't have a set price. So you actually decided how much you wanted to pay yourself, which obviously all of the proceeds go into charity, in this uh -huh. case, the Red Cross, for uh -huh. the toys campaign. Ah, oh, very good, very good. Linking very back nice. in with that campaign we heard about earlier. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And as well, visitors were encouraged, if they wanted, to bring some toys to be a part of the toy campaign as well as financial donations. Okay, okay. Uh, Gerard, you find one which um, is another Christmas dinner, but th this one with well, a very special this, yeah. dessert. Well. Yeah, panettone solidari. Okay. You know what panettone is? Panettone, I know it's Italian and I know that they sell it everywhere here at Christmas. It's yeah, really, really exactly. Popular. It's very, very like tasty. Like a cake kind of thing, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. More or less. So there is a famous chocolatier here in Barcelona, Oriol Balaguer. He's very, very famous. He has won several awards. And he designed uh, Panettone Solidaris. So they give away uh, panettones at a soup kitchen here in the Navas area in Barcelona after a regular meal. So very special occasion for those people. Uh, 300 panettones given away by Oriol Balaguer there at that Christmas dinner. And, well, we don't have much more time, but we got an email literally before we were going to record this podcast with uh, another kind of Christmas initiative. This one's funny. We, could, we had to mention this one. Go on, Killian. Yeah, it's a little bit, it's a little bit interesting, all right. So this is um, an initiative, a campaign, which is called Acoger un Atrapado, which is literally meaning... Uh, host um, <laughs> trapped, trapped person. someone trapped yeah host someone trapped <laughs> <laughs> thanks as, as, as that email that we got explained there are four and a half thousand flights cancelled around the world the week leading up to Christmas so this one particular travel company 
They're proposing a campaign basically to host anybody who's trapped in your city. Welcome them in so that they're not alone on the holidays. That's a, that's a good one. I like it. I like it. Something a bit different, isn't it? Time now for our Catalan phrase. What's this week's yard? Con Mr. Rem, Miss Rudem. Eh. Uh, Mr. Rem is uh, the more we laugh, no? Yeah. But I don't get the first bit. Con Mr. Rem. The more we are, the more we are going to laugh. The more the merrier. The more the merrier, yeah. Exactly. Con Mr. Rem, Miss Rem. Well, it's time to wrap up. And I uh, don't know about you, but I've got some last minute wrapping of presents to be doing myself. Sorry, I think that's terrible. Isn't it? Uh, thank oh, you for well. listening. If you enjoyed this podcast, please do spread the word. Uh, tell your friends. Thanks very much to the Arels Foundation for speaking to us this week. Last but not least, thank you, Gerard and Killian, for joining me today. It's always a pleasure. Thanks for having us, Lorcan. We're back again next Saturday, New Year's Eve. Pre recorded that one. With another episode of Filling the Sink, I look back on the past year and look ahead to 2023. Until then, from me, Lorcan Doherty, and all of us here at Catalan News, have a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Bonas festas.